Hey guys, so we are here. Let me actually just write this out. I just did this with Deepika, and I realized that I can say covering adult acne. Hello, Fatima. We got some people coming in. Okay, so I'm just writing covering adult acne with Dr. Nina Desai. So you guys know exactly what we're talking about. We pulled it on Instagram today on stories, or I did, and a lot of you guys had mentioned. A lot of you guys had mentioned that you wanted to do adult acne today. I know for you mamas that are out there looking for skincare advice for nursing as well as pregnancy, we will definitely get to that. But today we're just going to do adult, adult acne. acne. And so I'm in, I got like so many questions, Nina. Okay. It was crazy. So okay. we are both on limited time because we have to get home to the kitties. But hi, Parisha. So I'm just going to get to some of the stuff. This is actually dating back to a few things. Um... But, okay, someone was asking about acne related to, like, chicken pox scars. So, m not so much acne scars, but more related to something like chicken pox or something like that. Would you treat them the same way as acne scars? Uh, you mean they're asking about scars related yeah. to chicken so pox? Yeah, so the question is, hold on, sorry. So scars? Scars are usually treated... Um, Similarly, okay. acne scars versus chicken pox scars can be treated similarly. It kind of depends on the scar itself. It says helping remove chicken pox scars and what are some options Got for it. That? Okay, so pox scars, whether it's chicken pox scars or acne pox scars, what you are looking at is the type of scar. So there are different types of scars. So there are indented scars, which are like ice pick scars, and then there are hypertrophic or keloidal scars, which are raised over the skin, and you do treat those differently. Um, but yes, laser resurfacing would work um, on both chicken pox scars and acne scars if they're divided or pox. And is there anything that you can do like at home? to improve the yeah. appearance of the scar. Yeah, so there are some scar creams over the counter, scar creams, you're looking for something that's silicone based. Again, it depends on what type of scar you have. Is your scar red, is your scar white, is your scar indented or raised? Those are all different treatment options that you would need based on the different type of scar. So um, silicone based scar creams are great, scar away gels are great, or scar away silicone sheets are great. Um, is that like those Mederma ones that you see? They're not Mederma. They're a company called Scarway, and they're silicone sheets that you stick on scars. But again, that's used to soften scars. So I would always talk to your doctor, get an evaluation of what your scar would need, and then go that route. Okay, perfect. Someone is asking about back knee. So back uh -huh. acne. Um, uh -huh. What do you recommend for back acne, and how do you avoid it? Okay, so let's talk about avoiding first. Oftentimes, back acne, there is you know, your body's producing a little bit of oil, you're um, sweating a lot, those sorts of things can trigger acne on your back. Sometimes it's, you know, genetic, and um, regardless of how sweaty or oily you are, you still get it. But um, you wanna make sure you're cleansing properly, so a good body acne wash is really necessary, and over the counter, you're gonna find things that have active ingredients like salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide, so you really wanna start with a good acne body wash. Um, very important and then you also may need uh, prescription strength treatments depending on how severe your acne is or how what we call cystic or inflammatory it is you may need um, prescription strength treatments so as well I had said before in a live that I really liked this Neutrogena peel away or it's mm -hmm. like a leave-on mask uh -huh. which is salicylic acid based mm -hmm. um, that I like on my body is there anything else that you could recommend um, drugstore over the counter? Yeah, that... so there's a drugstore brand that I really like. That's It's an oldie but a goodie. It's called Panoxyl, and it's a 5% or a 10% benzoyl peroxide wash. Really good place to start when you're looking at an over-the-counter acne body wash. And do you think that I feel like a lot of times when the weather changes, that's when you start seeing it a little bit more. So sometimes you when you're sweating a lot, like you were saying. Or... Yeah, so summer months, obviously people tend to break out more. Um, because they're sweating more, but also depending on your activities. So if you're doing more, um, you know, more sports or more exercise and you're not getting home to shower right away or you're not showering at the gym or whatnot and you're letting that oil and that 
build up kind of sit on your skin you're definitely going to break out more so after you work out you really want to make sure that you shower and you cleanse so do you know have you seen like those wipes that they have yeah. like the towel wipes do absolutely those work? so those are great so those are great for on the go and usually what i'll do is most of my acne patients get some sort of wipe from me to put in their gym bag um, so that if they can't get to the shower right away, they can at least wipe down. Um, most of the, again, the over-the-counter ones are salicylic acid based. So you want to at least wipe down that dirt and that oil and that sweat off your body so that you're not sitting with that clogging your pores. Okay. Now someone is asking, Fozzy, Foz, I'm so sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Fozzy Khan is saying, what should the ladies in our 40s be doing? Combination skin, top two things we should do. For acne. Okay. So for acne, you want to make sure that you are exfoliating and you're cleansing. Those are the top two things you want to do. So in the morning, you know, after you've slept, there's not too much dirt or oil or buildup on your face. So a gentle cleanser is appropriate in the morning. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if you've been wearing makeup, if you've been wearing any sort of, um, you know, products, if you've been working out, if you've just been, you know, every day living your life, there is some dirt, oil, and makeup accumulation that's on your face at the end of the day. So you want to let your skin repair and let your skin breathe at the end of the day so make sure you're cleansing really really well at the end of the day and that's when i like to you know use my um glycolic cleanser or a salicylic acid based cleanser something that has a little medication to it um and the other thing is you want to exfoliate so oil buildup also you know if you exfoliate you're going to clean out your pores you're going to control your body's oil production so you don't clog as much question for you because mm -hmm. if i have it i think most of you ladies will too Glycolic, like what is the purpose of glycolic? When you say, I know yeah. I'm understanding benzol and salicylic acid, but mm -hmm. what is... So glycolic is an alpha hydroxy acid, so it does exfoliate the skin. Got it. Um, it's not as strong as something like a Retin-A or a Retinol, so it's one of the milder exfoliating products, but it does work really nicely for as a wash and as a leave-on. And we'll get to this later, but like glycolics are safe to use in nursing and pregnancy, so it's one of my go-tos for Perfect. all my patients who break out when they're pregnant or nursing. Okay, good to know. So that's good. Okay, skincare for oily hormonal acne skin. Yeah. So for hormonal acne, it's usually a similar story with each patient. It's seven to 10 days before I get my period, my skin starts to get oily and I start to see more acne. And it can be, you know, chin, it can be around the mouth. Those are two areas that are typically hormonal, but you know, it can happen anywhere. And when that starts to happen, you really wanna make sure first of all that there's no hormonal imbalance going on, um, which most of the time there isn't, but I always like, you know, to get a GYN on board, get everything evaluated, make sure your periods are regular, make sure you're not having any other symptoms along with your acne. Um, and if that's the case, or it's not the case, if you're, you know, you're just getting these hormonal breakouts as most of us do just cyclically around that time, there are options. Everything from, um, mild topicals to oral medications that may or may not include birth control. Um, so there are lots of options for hormonal acne, but again, at home, the two most important things are gonna be to make sure you're cleansing your face properly. Um, if you need to, you can use a spot treatment, salicylic or benzoyl peroxide. Um, you can use the wipes in the middle of the day if you're feeling extra oily, and then you want to use something that's going to help with exfoliation or repair at night, so something that has retinol or retin-A at night. Okay. Um, what do you, uh, what are your thoughts on non-ablative laser, 1540? I'm not sure what that is. Is that, does that mean something for like acne? Um, yeah. So for acne scarring, your 1550 non-ablative fraxel resurfacing is probably what you're talking about. Uh, it works beautifully for for acne scars. It is a non-ablative treatment, so downtime is minimal. There's a little pinkness, a little swelling. Um, usually you're gonna need, depending on the depth of your scars, anywhere from two to four treatments um, for you know really nice, good improvement, but it is a really good laser treatment. Someone is asking a great question. Is there something that you, is there, like let's say you're in your 20s and then you're in your 40s. Is there a difference of what you should be doing in your 20s, like addressing it, even if it's the same kind of a, a type of acne? Um, one difference I would make sure that, you know, and it's not so much your 20s versus your 40s, but more your early teens versus your 20s, 30s, and 40s is the amount of benzoyl peroxide that you use. So benzoyl peroxide 
can actually also break down some collagen. So in your earlier years, it may be fine to use, you know, those creams that have benzoyl peroxide in it and you're rubbing it all over your face. But as you get older, you really don't want to break down too much more collagen. So you really want to use your benzoyl peroxides as your spot, spot treatments. treatment. Mm-hmm. Smart. Okay. So then in place of that, that's what you were saying is like the exfoliating and glycolic mm-hmm. in place of that when you're a little bit. Or you may need other... Um, prescription strength topical antibiotics if you really are flared. Sometimes things cannot be treated with just the -the over-the-counter acne stuff. So if you are struggling with adult acne, Mm -hmm. there are lots of options and I just urge you to see your dermatologist because you don't need to suffer from this because we do have lots of really good treatment options. So someone is asking specifically about actual recs for mild acne. So anything that you pick up at the store that you would recommend either at the store or in office for mild acne Mm -hmm. so for mild acne again um you would want to start with a good cleanser uh so the -the over-the-counter cleansers that i like you can start with something super mild like a clean and clear daily pore cleanser which has fine little microbeads in it which is going to help exfoliate your skin but it's also going to help treat some of the active acne then for spot treatments, they do like like the Neutrogena um, Acne Spot Treatment, which is benzoyl peroxide based. You can also do the Neutrogena Light Mask, which is really nice Love at that. home. They have the, the full face mask and then they have the pen for individual spot sizes. Light treatments are great for acne. We do them in my office with a stronger light, red light and blue light, which are great to use for acne treatments as well. Um, In prescription strength acne treatments for mild, I always put people on mild topical antibiotics with a mild Retin-A if you need it. So there are lots of different options depending on your skin type. And so someone's asking now about dry skin because obviously benzoyl and all that can dry your skin out. So a lot of the -the over-the-counter salicylics, a lot of the -the over-the-counter benzoyl peroxides, they can be more drying to the skin. So you always want to make sure that you're using very little. Less is always more of your acne products. Don't think that the more you use, the faster it will go away. It's just the more you use, the more more irritated you'll get. So less is always more. And you really want to make sure that you're moisturizing your skin and you're staying hydrated while you're using acne products because the idea is it is for it to dry things out to exfoliate but um, when you pick a moisturizer make sure your moisturizer says oil free or non comedogenic and is there one that you like there are lots of good oil free or non comedogenic moisturizers some of my favorites are CeraVe CeraVe comes as a whole slew of different products and it can be Um, a CeraVe light lotion, or you can do a CeraVe cream if you need something heavier. Um, Aveeno is also another great line that has a lot of oil-free products. Uh, I know we've talked about the Elta MDs in the past. The Elta MD is also one of my favorites. That's a light moisturizer with sunscreen. That's not gonna clog your pore as long as you pick the one that says clear. Um, so if you if you are you know acne prone, you do want to stay away from things that are really oily and really heavy, because that may actually make you break out. And that goes more. for makeup too, mm-hmm. not just for skincare. makeup too. Yeah. Um, I love this question because someone's saying about Skin Medica. I don't know if you've ever tried it. I've yeah. never tried it, but the yeah. AHA bag cleaners. But I saw Neutrogena has an alpha beta cleaner yes. is it similar yeah it is similar it is similar the alpha and the beta cleaner so the alpha is usually your glycolic or your lactic and your beta is usually your salicylic so yes they are very similar um and again it's pick you know to your tolerance certain products can be more irritating than others so um, i do love skin medica i like their products Awesome. And so someone is going back to asking about um, how often do you recommend to exfoliate? So if you are going to do that. Again, that's, every person is different. So if you have really sensitive skin, you may only want to start using your exfoliating product. And that can be anything as mild as your glycolic cleanser to your super strong prescription strength Retin-A. Everyone's different. So usually I'll have you start out doing it one to two times a week. And then if you can, slowly build your tolerance. Got it. Okay. So that's a good one. Um, someone's asking if you're Iranian. Nope. She's Indian. As am I. We both are. Yeah. Um, okay. What should you do if you have cystic acne along your jaw, only on one side of the face? Anything over the counter or anything else I should be doing? So if you do have true cystic acne, I would urge you to see your dermatologist because the cysts do tend to be deep. They tend to be stubborn and they do tend to scar the skin if you know they're not treated appropriately. And there are great medications for true cystic acne. Okay. Someone's asking about hyperpigmentation. I think I get asked about this all yeah. the time. What is a good over the counter? 
um, product out there for hyperpigmentation. Yeah, so one. for hyperpigmentation, there's a few different things that you can use. And again, you want to pick something that's good for your skin type. Um, vitamin C's topically are going to be wonderful at both preventing and treating hyperpigmentation. So um, vitamin C serums, vitamin C gels, they're great for that sort of thing. The other thing that you can do is you can do um, a form of a bleaching agent like hydroquinone. Ambi is a product you can find over the counter. A-M-B-I, it's 2% hydroquinone, whereas 4% is only available through uh, prescription. Um, there are you know, a lot of product lines that dermatologists sell or make in their office that will also have a combination of vitamin C's and light bleaching agents. Kojic acid is another thing that will help brighten the skin. So there's lots of good options for Someone hyperpigmentation. is asking on that, on that same um, wavelength, vitamin C about the purging effect. Um, have you noticed or heard of a purging effect when adding vitamin C into a skin regimen? I'm not sure what purging effect means. Are you saying that, that your like skin will start out? to break out a little bit more? I'm assuming that that's what that means because that's what purging, I think, so, so is that. Um, again, it's all about picking the products that are right for your skin type. So there are some vitamin C's that are more emollient based, which actually may make you break out a little bit more if that's what you're talking about. Um, or you could pick something like a SkinCeuticals vitamin C E ferulic acid, which is gonna have your antioxidants and your beta hydroxy acid. So it's actually gonna be good for acne prone skin and it shouldn't cause additional acne. Got so it. just pick the right product. Um, someone's saying about exfoliating too much can cause the increase of sebum in your skin, is that true? So, you know, there's a fine line between exfoli exfoliating too much and not exfoliating enough, and that's why it's really important to work with your dermatologist to kind of figure out what your skin type is and get the right regimen for you. Okay, um, someone's asking why Why does hormonal acne even exist? I guess that's yeah. more just like a science-based question. To annoy us, right? <laughs> to annoy us. Um, so, yeah, so usually what's happening is at certain times of the month, there's a surge in different hormone levels. And it's oftentimes your skin will start to feel more oily. Your skin will start to feel a little bit more greasy. You'll break out a little bit more because of the surge of hormones. And one of our go-to medications that are prescription strength actually targets the surge of testosterone in the body. So um, we have options for women depending on what their issue actually is. Priya, my girlfriend Priya. Hi, Priya. She's Hi. saying, I have super sensitive skin and eczema, so most things inflame her skin. So are there any recommendations for sensitive skin? Yeah, so you really, again, it's all about less is more. If you have sensitive skin, I would, you know, kind of stick more to the light glycolics and things like that as opposed to the more drying salicylics or benzoyl peroxides. And then there are some prescription strength products that are nice and mild. Um, but it's all about less is more. So if you have really sensitive skin, you may find that you can only use your acne products like two times a week, and the rest of the week you really need to hydrate your skin with the right stuff. So the right moisturizer mm -hmm. is, uh, we talked about your favorite, did we talk about your favorite moisturizer? Was it the Ulta MD one? The Ulta MD is one of my favorites. It's a light moisturizer with sunscreen, and again, it has to be the right fit for you. For so you. if you're one who gets really dry from certain products, then I may put you on a heavier moisturizer. But if you tend to be acne prone and you know you're feeling oily in the middle of the day, you may not need more. Okay. Um, is Accutane, this is a huge question I always get too, is Accutane safe to use? Does it guarantee 100% results? It is safe to use and nothing in this world guarantees 100% results. So Accutane is a very strong medication for acne, but when used in the right setting, under the guidance of your dermatologist, a large percentage of patients do very, very well. And are there certain foods or drinks that cause acne. We actually shot a video, I think over six months ago, yeah. on adult acne, which we're going to edit and share on the blog, like we did with the sunscreen one. Yeah. And we do cover food on there, but maybe you can just kind of touch up on that. Yeah, um, briefly, there's nothing that's 100% for everybody. Some people do notice that certain types of foods do trigger inflammation in their body and it may trigger them to break out more. Um, so greasy foods, fatty foods, chocolates, caffeines, gluten, certain things can trigger that inflammation and make you break out more, but not with everybody. And it's a case-by-case -case basis. So we kind of have to watch what your triggers are. And if people have a lot of acne and they're having a hard time figuring out 
what may trigger their acne, what I'll usually have them do is make a diary. And over the month, we'll watch when your acne flared, when it didn't flare, what you were eating, what you weren't eating, what time of the month were you at, um, what your products were, all these things that all fall into play when it comes to why you may be breaking it's out. It's tedious, but sometimes just super helpful. But really helpful. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, someone asked this earlier too about Fraxel. Is it suitable? Is there a laser suitable for South Asian skin? Yes. So there are multiple lasers that you can use to treat acne scars in South Asian skin. Um, fractionated resurfacing is safe. Pro-fractional resurfacing is one of my favorites. And fractal resurfacing is also safe. So um, don't think because you have dark skin, you're not a candidate for resurfacing for your acne scars. You, you very well could be. Okay. I have dry and sensitive skin, and I just got a dermatological... Oh, oh, dermafacial, sorry. Even though I went in for clear and brilliant, um, but just suggested otherwise, even after that, I still have dry skin. What shall I do? So it sounds like you may have gotten a hydrofacial and you were in for clear and brilliant permea. Clear and brilliant permea is a um, baby fractal that treats pigment. So it's great for hyperpigmentation. It's great for melasma. It's what we did for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which um, I loved. So good. So, uh, so that's it. That's what that's for. The hydrofacial is a um a boost it boosts the brightness of your skin it boosts you know um it exfoliates the skin it opens up some of your pores so um sorry what was the question oh no it was about the she did the uh, dermafacial even though i went in for clear and brilliant permia but she suggested otherwise even after that i still have dry skin yeah so the hydrofacial is not going to improve you know the overall dryness of your skin what you really need to get on is a good hydration um, regimen. So that's probably gonna include some ceramide filled moisturizers. That's why I really like um, CeraVe because it has ceramides in it. And what ceramides are is they basically repair the skin barrier. If you're dry and you're consistently dry, it may be that your barrier is not retaining moisture. So you have to work on your skin barrier before your body's gonna retain that moisture. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Picasher? Mm-hmm. Is that okay? What is mm-hmm. what is Picasher? Picasher. So it's a laser. Oh, okay. So Picasher is a different laser, and it's for pigment. Oftentimes used for pigment. You can use it for tattoo removal, but you can use it for like deep dermal pigment, like um, certain types of birthmarks, melasma. It can be used to treat so as well. So it's saying that it burned someone in certain areas, and now that area is darkened, which is probably what the Picasher was probably used for in the first place. So do you recommend a different laser? It really depends on the hyperpigmentation that you got. So again, that would need to be evaluated. If it's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which can occur from some treatments, um, sometimes just bleaching the skin or chemical peels would be enough to lighten the area, but it really depends on what the hyperpigmentation you use for. So someone's asking, I think I could answer this one, about as the day goes on, the acne scars appear to look more visible. Lighting affects it too. Is there anything to help the scars from looking prominent? So. From a makeup perspective, when I'm working with people that have acne scars and they're very prominent, texture-wise, there are two things that I actually like to do. So one is I like to really stipple in the product so that way the pitted skin almost gives you the illusion that it's sitting on top. Like the product is not going into the actual pits or the crevices, it's sitting on top of it. So even when light is reflected on it, it bounces off versus like looking like it sits inside of a divot. Um, and for that, I really, really love the beauty blender. So, but it's all about techniques. So I like taking a very damp beauty blender and literally like, almost like you're pushing it into your skin, not dragging it, but pushing it in. And that helps kind of fill those little divots. So I was just gonna say, one of the things that we oftentimes do for acne pits is fill them. So I will use something like a Restylane or a Juvederm to fill pitted acne scars, which gives you more long-term results, Not, not, like forever right. but it lasts like nine to twelve months and they really fill the pits nicely so it's right. very similar and then also the other thing that i do is i usually do corrector first so there are different correctors depending on what color this the scar is in relation to your skin tone but i'll do a corrector in those spots i'll then put a foundation over it and then i'll go back with concealer that's more even to your skin tone color and then kind of even it out again. So it's more about layering. She's asking about like the makeup for Mm -hmm. it, but I think that just might be the biggest thing. And you know, some people don't like the feel of really heavy foundation. And so that's why I say, if you want to go lighter, if you want to use a CC cream, just always layer because less is more like you say, Mm -hmm. less is more, put it on one layer. I always like to do one layer first, do the rest of my makeup and then any imperfections you can see that are peeking through, then go back and kind of, 
you know, layer on top of it because otherwise it feels too cakey too. Um, hydrogen peroxide, it sounds like. Um, oh, sorry, Ali, I didn't see yours. Did you, what, what was yours? I didn't see hers. Did I not read it? Um, can we use hydrogen peroxide for skin? Cool. Any good skincare? Can you use hydrogen peroxide? That's kind of strong, isn't it? Yeah, you want to be very careful with hydrogen peroxide because you don't want to burn your skin. Right. So. Um, what cleanser? Is there a good cleanser that you recommend for mild acne? Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, the cleansers, we talked about the alpha hydroxies and the beta hydroxy cleansers. Um, so you want to, you know, of course use something mild, the salicylics are gonna be a little bit more irritating, so like the Neutrogena acne, things like that. Um, try a little bit and see how you do with them because they may be um, a little bit drying for your skin. Physical exfoliators versus chemical yeah. exfoliators. So physical exfoliators are basically like, you're gonna pick something that has um, like microbeads in them, um, something that's a little bit more abrasive. So physical exfoliators exfoliate that way and chemical exfoliators, again, are gonna be your um, beta hydroxies and your your alpha hydroxy acids like your glycolics and your lactics. So physical exfoliators, you just have to be really careful to not overly damage and overly strip the skin with your physical exfoliator. So you want to be really gentle if you're using a scrub, um, so you don't irritate the skin. What about if you have redness, and that could be from picking a pimple or mm -hmm. whatever it is. What do you do for redness? So we treat redness, and their redness is usually caused by what's called post-inflammatory inflammation. So there's a lot of inflammatory cells. When you pick at your face and you squeeze things, you're actually triggering this inflammatory response, and that's creating um, these little cells to come to that area, and it's creating blood vessels to feed that area. So that's why you're getting that redness. So the most important thing is to stop picking, stop squeezing, sunblock to that area because when the area is healing and it's exposed to a lot of sun, it will hyperpigment faster. So you really want to protect the skin from the sun. And then in order to help get rid of that redness faster, we do laser treatments often. Someone is asking IPL or lasers, which is better for acne pigments and scarring. So um, if you're South Asian, you have to be very careful with IPL or other light sources because um, IPL is a light source that oftentimes can burn darker skin. So you have to be very careful with your IPLs if you're, if you're darker skin. Um, so for acne pigment, if it's true, just hyperpigmentation and it's browns, I oftentimes do chemical peels that really improve the hyperpigmentation of the scars. If they're true scars, depending on how deep they are, you can do something simple like microneedling. Microneedling will also stimulate collagen in those scars, cause it to kind of fill in. Um, microneedling with or without PRP, and PRP is platelet-rich plasma. That's like we the dry Dracula your blood. Facial. The vampire facial, vampire facial, yes. We dry your blood, we spin it down, we take out platelet rich plasma, which is full of growth factors and cytokines, which are going to produce even more collagen. Um, so, all of that is really good to fill in scars. One step above that, you can go, you can start doing resurfacing, like fractionated resurfacing with Fraxel or Profractional. Um, and if you want to avoid lasers altogether, then we fill. We can fill scars as well. Or if people just have one or two areas, oftentimes we fill them with filler. So, so lots of options. Microneedling, um, and then I think we're gonna have to go just pretty soon, but um, microneedling, as far as that goes, um, are there- Love it. So you love it? Love it. I have a micro at home microneedling system. Is Do you recommend that? Is it dependent on like how bad so, the acne is? No, so the at home microneedling systems are just gonna be a lot milder than what we do in the office. Got so it. when you do yours at home, you're not bleeding right, at right, home. Right. You're lightly, gently, you know, creating some, some tiny, tiny little wounds in your skin and you're stimulating collagen that way, always good to do. Okay. Anything you can do at home to stimulate collagen, the better. Um, but microneedling down in the office is gonna be much more aggressive. The, the devices that we use go a lot deeper, they're much more aggressive. You will leave the office with pinpoint bleeding and you'll look like you have a really bad sunburn. But in a day or two, you yeah. will be totally That's like back what the to clear normal. That's what the Clear Brilliant is. Pretty, kind of. Similar, yeah. similar. So similar. I did that and yes. I loved it. I absolutely loved it and you can yes. see it. Someone's saying vitamin C or vitamin E, what's the difference? Uh, would you so two different vitamins, basically two different antioxidants, vitamin C and E often go together and give you a better result. But if you have to pick one for pigmentation, vitamin C has more um, efficacy with hyperpigmentation. Any suggestions for KP skin apart from 
and lactin. lactin. Yes. So amlactin is your over-the-counter lactic acid. It's usually around 10%. Um, KP is a genetic skin condition where you get this like chicken skin, usually on your upper arms, but it can happen on your thighs, it can happen on your buttocks, and it's the way your skin is made. So there's unfortunately no cure for KP, but the best thing you wanna do is as much exfoliation as possible, and this is one of those times where you can't really over exfoliate if you're, as long as you're not irritating your skin. So what I'll do oftentimes in the offices, I will do um, chemical peels for KP. Um, there's also a kit that you can buy on Amazon called um, by Glytone called the Glytone KP kit. I really like that kit as well as an at home. Um, but for your best, strongest, most aggressive treatment, it's going to be an office chemical peel. So when this person's asking about, aside from lasers, fillers, microneedling, what are the best options for acne scars? I'm assuming they're saying like what are more natural mm -hmm. ways of healing acne scars or getting rid of them is there anything that you yeah, ever so again it depends on this type of scar you have and the depth of the scar you have so anything Sorry. anything that you can do to improve cell turnover um increase collagen production in your skin so you know you want to start using your um your retinol at night your retinol serum um those sorts of things can also improve the tone and texture of your skin. And again, it depends on how deep your scars are. Um, and then how do you deal with rosacea? Rosacea is a good one too. Rosacea is because mm -hmm. it's, what's a good? Yeah, so rosacea um, can be a very complicated issue to treat and it really depends on what type of rosacea that you have. Oftentimes with rosacea, people will have certain triggers. Mm -hmm. So you really want to know what your triggers are. Do you flare when you go out in the sun? Do you flare with exercise? Do you flare with alcohol? Do you flare with heat? Do you flare with certain types of food? So rosacea is an inflammatory response that oftentimes, you know, does have specific triggers. So the best thing to do, of course, is to know your triggers, to try to avoid them. And then if you are really, you know, um, getting that more inflammatory acne type rosacea there's lots of good options treatment wise so um see your local dermatologist and there's definitely good options i see a lot of people asking about strawberry legs or strawberry skin is that the same thing is that rosacea or what that, that is more of your keratosis pilaris where you're going to oh, get those that's... little red bumpy kind of chicken skin Got it. um okay so we answered that one um, and then La Roche Posay has the niacinamide. I do love niacinamide. Niacinamide is a um, is a vitamin that can calm down redness, and it's one of the reasons that I love the La, uh, the um, Alta MD is because there's niacinamide and Alta MD as well. So yes, niacinamide is a good added additive. Sometimes with inflammatory acne, I'll have patients on a niacinamide type vitamin. Um, so yes, that just helps calm down inflammation and redness. And then quickly, we'll just ask this one, um, just because I know there were a lot of people that were asking, um, for women that do have acne uh, while pregnant or nursing, is yeah. there anything that you recommend? Can they do lasers? Or is there something over the counter that they yeah. should try or keep away from? So um, unfortunately, we don't do lasers when you're pregnant. Um, when you're nursing, it's a different story, but when you are pregnant, we usually don't do any laser type treatment. Um, but there are treatment options when you're pregnant. There are a few acne medications that are what we call pregnancy category B, so they're safe during pregnancy. Uh, so again, you really wanna talk to your dermatologist about those because some of the stuff that you find over the counter, I usually don't recommend in pregnancy. Like I don't recommend your benzoyl peroxides. I don't recommend your salicylic acids, but I do recommend glycolic. So. Um, just talk to your dermatologist and they'll make a, a really good regimen for you because there definitely are treatment options. Um, and someone's saying, is it okay to do a chemical peel a week after I slightly burn my cheek from my flat iron? Yeah, so it, I, it depends how bad the burn is. It depends what kind of peel you're having done. And you could always ask whoever's doing your peel to avoid that area because it may it may get worse. Okay, glycolic acid rex, that's a good one because uh, glycolic, you had mentioned that is a good exfoliator. So usually those are found in physician grade lines. So you really do have to like look in Sephora. Um, so you may look at like your DDF lines, but usually um, Skin Medica, those sorts of things, they're gonna be more your physician grade lines. And are there any masks that you really like for acne prone skin? Um, so, you know, I don't have a favorite acne prone skin mask. I don't. Something that, yeah, so that's maybe something. Um, what can I use for dry skin right out of my eye? My eyelid has been extremely dry. Hmm. That's 
So what was the question? Oh, the going back oh. to the mask one real quick. One mm-hmm. thing you can do, it's not something that you can buy over the counter, but you can make at home, is I do like when, when I have patients who have a lot of inflammatory acne and they maybe they're pregnant or they're nursing or they, they don't want to be on a lot of stuff, I will have them make a turmeric and honey oh, mask at home yeah. um, to help calm down inflammation. Okay. So that is one of the things I do like. Question two is blackheads. Why do people get blackheads versus whiteheads? Someone's asking about whiteheads versus blackheads. Yeah, so whiteheads and blackheads, there's two technical terms for them. There's open comedones and closed comedones. It basically has to do with if the pore is open to the air and it gets oxidized, then it turns it kind of black. If it's closed and it's kind of covered by the skin, then it looks white. So, um, that's why mostly like around the nose, people find the black ones because that's your pores are open usually on your nose. But then if you have a, like a whitehead, it's usually stuck under the skin and you have to open up the skin to get it out. But if you're getting a blackhead out, oftentimes you don't have to go in with a lancet or an extractor because it's already open. Um, um and people are saying they've been getting tons of whiteheads post-pregnancy. Is that so normal? that, that can happen too because your hormones are changing. So your body's producing a lot more oil. Um, if you're getting lots of blackheads, uh, two things you really just want to check is check all your products. Make sure nothing says oily or for um, for super dry skin because it may have a lot of oil in there and you don't actually realize that you're clogging your pores. Um, and then see how oily you get without using those products during the day. It may be your body's own internal oil production. Someone's asking about the... Um micro needling under the eye mm-hmm. I believe you do do that right because yes. it also helps with the texture absolutely like, yeah. I love micro needling under the eye you can get really up close to the eye um because it's safe someone's saying between finacea and tretinoin, tretinoin. which I, which is better for adult acne so All two these... totally different treatments finacea is the azelaic acid and tretinoin is in the family of Retin-A. So they're very different. Tretinoin has lots of different strengths. It's obviously gonna be a little bit hard, uh, dry, more drying, more exfoliating. Finacea, one of the great things about it is it's safe in pregnancy and it works really nicely for certain types of acne. So again, that's a question that your dermatologist would have to evaluate which you're a better candidate for. Malia is saying, Dr. Nina, you should have your own YouTube channel, please. <laughs> I agree, she should. Oh, thank um, you, I appreciate that. And I guess there's a good question too, vitamins. Like, do vitamins, is there, are there vitamins we should be so, ingesting too? So we were just talking about that in terms of the niacinamide. Um, so there are certain vitamins that do help with reducing inflammation. Um, certain B vitamins, zinc, that sort of thing, do help reduce inflammation. So sometimes I will have my acne patients on B complex vitamins, zinc. Um, there's a vitamin called nicodan uh, that is prescription strength that's great for reducing your body's inflammation. Thoughts on differin? Uh, so different for acne yeah. and wrinkle prevention. So a different is now over the counter. Um, we talked about it in our video. Yeah, I know so, we did. So yeah, so that's it's one of happen. the over the counter. It used to be prescription strength, and now it's over the counter. So it's one of the stronger over the counter um, uh, adapalene, which is a in the family of Retin A's that you can use. So it works really nicely. It's more for your blackheads and your whiteheads. Nighttime medication again, build your tolerance. So you may find that. It's a little drying to your skin if you're using it too often, but it is very a very good medicine. Someone is asking, just because we're running out of time, someone is asking, a lot of questions now are coming in about laser hair removal and stuff, which we will absolutely get to. I think that's a great one for South Asian skin too. Yeah. Um, so we will we will do that. Um, I just wanted to see if there were, someone asked about the downtime for microneedling in the office. Yeah. It's really something more that your texture you feel, right? So microneedling, when you leave the office, depending on, on how aggressive your treatment is and what you're trying to treat so for someone who has acne scars obviously I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive for someone who doesn't um, you will look red and like you've got a really bad sunburn and that usually again lasts about one to two days and then your skin may feel a little bit dry afterwards we can do um, a actual like the uh, hydration hydration peel or we can do a a demo of microneedling oh yeah oh we should do that Um, yes it's fabulous absolutely love it Um, so yes Pink okay. for one to two days, minimal downtime. Okay, great. So I think overall, let's just wrap up really quick. I think the biggest questions just after ro- scrolling through all of that were helping get rid of pitted acne. Those were one thing that I was reading a lot of. So okay. people, like the options that you can do. And I think we talked about some lasers. So basically we'll start, um, we can do anything from filler to certain types of collagen induction therapy, which include microneedling, um, laser resurfacing with something like Fraxel, or deeper resurfacing with something like Pro Fractional, which is an actual 
ablative laser. So downtime is different for each one. Results are going to be different, and the amount of treatments you're going to need are different. So And that goes as well for just discoloration or pigmentation from acne. So pigmentation from acne is different. If you have scars and pigmentation, obviously, you know, you're going to need different treatments than if you just have scars and if you just have pigment. If you just have pigment and it's just sitting on the top layer of the skin, you may do very well with milder treatments like chemical peels or that someone mentioned the Clair and Brilliant Permea, which is, again, one of my favorites for pigment issues. So there are different treatment options for okay. pigment. Great. And um, this one is not skin care related, but so many people have asked, so I'm just going to ask you too, Nina. Someone's yeah. asking about thinning hair on the scalp. Do you have any things that you... So that we should do a whole nother okay, so we'll do topic whole on because there's a lot on thinning hair, but the main thing that, you know, few takeaways for thinning hair, um, the more you stress about it, the worse it'll get. So that is the first thing I urge, that stress plays a huge factor in your thinning hair. Look at your genetics, look at your family, see what, you know, kind of hair, the not just the other women, but the other men in your family have too. Um, so you get a better picture if, if there's some familial component to it. Um, always make sure you're up on all your blood work because there are vitamin deficiencies that can thin your hair. There are certain autoimmune conditions that can thin your hair. And if you're looking to start with something simple, always start with your biotin supplements. Biotin is a vitamin for hair, skin, um, hair, nails, uh, you want to take biotin supplements every day to, you know, kind of give your body what it needs. And then we can talk a lot more about other things. Okay. Stuff and then last thing, just because everyone always asks me this and I want your input on it. Best eye cream. Go. So that, again, depends on what you're trying to treat. What about so, just for um, puffiness and dark under eyes. Is there something that you could recommend both maybe higher end and lower end? Yeah. So um, lower end, I really like the uh, Neutrogena Eye Boost Cream, the eye gel boost. Is it the Hydra Boost eye gel? Yeah, which, yeah, is, boost, which yeah. is great, which is too. really hydrating to the under eyes. You know, kind of gives you a little bit more um, firmness, a little bit more puffiness to the eyes. And then my favorite high end cream is actually the Elastin Eye Renewal Cream which is fabulous. Um, so those are two different options for um, low end versus high end. There's a lot of different eye creams out there. And again, it depends on what you're trying to treat. You're trying to treat fine lines, you're trying to treat um, puffiness. If you're trying to treat, you know, bags under the eyes, a whole slew, but that is lower end for just general eye care versus high end um, Neutrogena versus Elastin. Nina, thank you so much. I mean, look at poor Nines has been working all day. <laughs> no, I love it. Her sister just gave birth to a baby too, so we have so much to do now. But um, That's thank okay. you so much. Off You're awesome. Kiddos. She's such thank a wealth you. of knowledge. You guys also be thank sure you for listening. to follow Nina at Dr. Nina Desai. Ask her questions as much as you have. She'll My get pleasure. to you. And we will obviously keep doing these lives um, and hopefully keep up with all the questions that you guys have. So yes. thanks for tuning in. I hope it was in. helpful. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.